This screencast moves into two-dimensional motion, uh, which is our chapter three in our textbook. Um, first picture you see here of uh, a photograph, uh, shutter speed equal increments of a frog in projectile motion. Notice it has both an X and Y component. And this is kind of what you were investigating in the video activity last week. Okay. Just want to quickly go over vector versus scalar once again as we move into this section. Um, remember, a vector is a quantity that has both size and direction. Um, can be denoted by an arrow. So notice the red here uh, is velocity, 10 meters per second towards the east. Here, this is an acceleration vector, right? Sp specifically, the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared down. Okay. On the other hand, we can also have scalars. There are any type of quantity that only has size. Uh, examples of those would be time, also mass, uh, 15 kilograms. You, you don't uh, describe it with a direction. Now, when vectors are added, um, you need to add them what's called head to tail. And if you are representing them by arrows, you're literally taking the head of one arrow, putting the tail uh, to the next one, and putting them together. Uh, for instance, um, when we add up two vectors, we call them a resultant. And if we take an example here if of a plane flying parallel to the wind, you have two combinations. You can either be flying you know, with the wind or against it. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Notice if I put the tail on the tip of the other vector and put those two together, when they're in the same direction, we get an overall velocity vector of 120. Well, if we're against the wind, right, and if I take this 20 here and I take its tail, put it on the tip of the other, we're only going to get something that is 80, right? Uh, really doesn't matter what the units are here. They could be miles per hour. However, it gets a little bit more complicated when our vectors are not parallel to each other. As an example here, we have a river flowing towards the right and someone trying to swim straight across the river. In that case, we have two velocities to add. One is to the right, the other one is straight upward. Okay? If we put the tail on the tip of the other, or the head, right, head to tail method, Notice that the addition of these two vectors right, is shown here by this red resultant. Okay? And notice the geometry that we get here. We get a right triangle right, where we have uh, two legs and then what's called the hypotenuse. You will be learning this very shortly in geometry and we'll go over it here as well. Okay? Now, to actually get the size of this vector, we can use what's called the Pythagorean theorem. Right, where C represents the long side, known as the hypotenuse. A and B represent the sides of the, the you know, forward as well as up in this case. And if you solve for that length, you wind up getting the square root of the addition of the other side squared. Okay. So as an example, if we had a 3 meter per second current, with the swimmer moving at 4 meters per second across, if you put 3 squared plus 4 squared, you'll wind up getting 25 when you add those together. The square root of that would give you a magnitude at some angle of exactly 5 meters per second. Um, you'll see this is referred to as a 3-4-5 triangle. Uh, you'll come across it in geometry quite often. So whenever anything is fired at some angle, okay, it can have both a horizontal and a vertical component. The word component is just a fancy word for part. So if this thing is launched here, right, at this angle, it has a horizontal piece as well as, well as a vertical piece, okay? Um, if we knew this angle, we could actually calculate what these pieces are, and we'll cover that in the next set of notes. So for an object um, launched into the air, all right, if it's only acted upon by gravity, sometimes air resistance uh, will tend to neglect that most times. It's referred to as a projectile. 
okay? The path that, it's, that it takes is referred to as its trajectory. So the term trajectory, basically fancy word for the path that an object takes. Okay. As you found out from your video analysis, it's going to be quite useful to consider the horizontal and vertical aspects of a projectile separately, right? Uh, if you remember, right, in the vertical direction you have acceleration, while in the horizontal direction you have constant velocity. Um, this is a classics physics question. You'll see the demo in class. If you were to drop a ball vertically uh, while also launching something horizontally, which one would hit the ground first? Right? As you saw in class, they would hit the ground at exactly the same time. Okay. Um, what's interesting to note here is that these are equal snapshots and notice both the gray and black one tend to pick up more distance downward with each succeeding time increment. That just means it's getting faster in the downward direction and that's due to gravity. However, the horizontally launched one, notice the spacings horizontally are always the same. It's because it has constant velocity forward. Okay. They hit the ground at different spots, but they hit the ground at the same time. Okay. Which that explanation uh, is pretty much right here. Okay. No need to say it again. Okay. Here's another way to kind of view it. If you break up the motion into two pieces, you see that vertically the distance gets larger and larger and larger as it picks up speed downward due to gravity. Well, if you look at the horizontal direction, right, notice there's equal spacings because the velocity sideways, or in the X, is constant. Um, this is a good figure that kind of breaks down an angle-launched projectile, which just means it's not fired perfectly horizontal. Um, notice uh, for this particular motion, these little arrows here, right, denote the horizontal as well as the vertical pieces of the velocity. This arrow in the middle is the actual velocity vector, right? It's launched in this direction, has a little forward piece and a very large upward piece. But notice as time goes by, this vertical piece decreases because gravity is acting upon it. The horizontal piece, though, stays exactly the same. And notice that horizontal piece is the same length everywhere through the motion because it's not changing. However, the vertical gets even smaller. It momentarily reaches zero at the zenith point at the top of the motion and then becomes downward. Right? Um, if you were only to look at the vertical piece, this would be the same as if you threw an object directly up into the air hit its top spot, and came straight back down. All right? The only difference with this projectile is it happens to be moving forward at the same time. Okay. The term range um, deals with how far an object moves forward right, in the x direction. You could have something launched very high up into the air or very low. Those would be different angles of launch. We'll look at this in a later lab, uh, but if you were to fire at the same speed, you can get various ranges depending upon the angle at which you launch. Um, notice if you launch at 45 degrees, you get your maximum range, and any pair of complementary angles will yield exactly the same range. For instance, here we have 30 and 60, as well as 15 and 75. Okay. Once again, this all assumes a uh, lack of air resistance or drag. If you were to have a significant amount, this parabolic path that you would normally have would just kind of get cut down a little bit. Okay. 